How's it going folks, Stu here. My guys, if you are a sucker for sitting in dark spaces and sobbing uncontrollably, I have got a film for you. Because After Sun, unlike the creamy aloe infused liquid in a bottle it's named after, uh, didn't soothe my soul, it just slapped it around a bit. Definitely a fun review today. Two thumbs up for crying internally. <laughs> After Sun is a directorial debut of Charlotte Wells and it stars Frankie Corio and Paul Mescal as a father and a daughter on a holiday away in Turkey. I've been hearing a lot of things about this through the year as it's been premiering at various different film festivals. This thing's been snowballing buzz like a snowball. So my anticipation has been slowly climbing, uh, which is always a little bit of a fear when you go into a film. Is it going to live up to expectations? You know, is it going to tear my heart in half and leave me crying in the bathrooms of Picture House? Yes to both of those things. I know I have a tendency to talk a lot in hyperbole on this channel, but this is honestly a miraculous piece of cinema and without a doubt the strongest directing debut I've seen this decade and certainly one of the strongest directing debuts I've maybe seen for the last few decades. I was honestly left kind of stunned by this film. It's really, really beautiful. But any dissection of this film's emotional successes has to start with the lead performances here from Paul Mescal and Frankie Corio, who are both just sublime here on screen. I've loved Paul Mescal ever since he popped up in Normal People, a show which ruined me, and his fleeting performance in The Lost Daughter. I just think the guy has such a fascinating and captivating emotional depth on screen at all points. He has an incredible gentleness as a performer, which just immediately disarms you. It makes you really care for the guy. And dance is a really fine line of sincerity where you are always aware that something is going on under the surface. That there's this almost kind of fragile nature to the warmth that just comes off the guy on screen. It's what works so well about him in Normal People. And again, it's what works so well about him here as a father that's on holiday with his daughter, that is struggling with the many different implications of fatherhood at that point in his life. I just found him kind of devastating in this role in a way which is very subtle, I think. It's a performance which doesn't have a lot of particularly showy beats, but much like the film it's in has this kind of creeping undercurrent of emotion that's just brimming and waiting to tide over. But as his daughter in the film, Frankie Corio is equally as captivating. She is just so great here in what is her first on-screen performance. I don't need to explain to you how child performances can make or break a film, but it's just so great to see one at the center of this film pretty much carrying most of this film alongside Mescal that never falters under that brewing emotional weight of the film. It's a really complex stage of growing up and I think Corio really wonderfully attacks that on screen here. And again, just like Mescal, it doesn't give any showy moments, it doesn't ever feel like she's acting, acting. It just feels wholly genuine and, and wholly sincere and the two of them together feel like a genuine father-daughter relationship that you believe. And that is the make or break for this film. That is the central thing that this film rides on. Having a relationship which feels so sincere and so believable at the heart of it that balances those two perspectives flawlessly. You have a child going through a part in childhood where you're starting to want your own independence and you're starting to learn a little bit more about yourself and your own emotions. And then a young father that's coming to terms with his own life as well as the life of someone that he's having to look after. The childhood and the fatherhood perspective don't clash in this film. They feel so wonderfully balanced and the catalyst for those two aspects of these characters is such a genuine chemistry between the two leads. And while screenplay and direction here complements that balance as well, complements the chemistry between these two characters because it's one that, as I said, shifts between these two perspectives in a very natural way that's pulling off a really tricky piece of directing and writing sleight of hand in front of us. It's showing us one thing whilst gradually building the blocks of something altogether more devastating underneath it. And that's my favourite thing about the screenplay here and the most impressive thing I think about this as a directing debut. It is a film which frankly perfectly understands exactly how much to show and tell its audience at every point along the way. So that creeping emotion that I mentioned earlier with the performances ends up kind of very naturally weaving its way into the film. On paper, we're really just watching these two characters and this relationship exist in various different spaces on this holiday in Turkey. But on the lower levels in the subtext, we're getting so much more from these characters and their relationship. And that's something that's complemented and echoed perfectly through Gregory Oak's cinematography here, which almost has this kind of 
feeling like you're flicking through a photo book, like you're looking back through instant photos you took on a disposable camera you got for five quid at Boots before you went on holiday, right? It has a feel of that real warmth, I think, of memories, those moments that are perfectly captured in those little frames but that almost feel like they have this imperfection to them. And that's something, again, that's echoed through the creative choice to splice this film up with moments of mini DV that Frankie Corio's character, the daughter in the film, has been shooting throughout the holiday. It again complements that idea of memory, of looking back through something, of the fragility and, I suppose, the imperfections of memory. And Wells' direction and screenplay takes that and weaves it so expertly into the emotional beats of the film or the thematic beats of the film so that when this film begins to put its cards on the table, begins to peel back its layers and reveal itself to you what it's actually doing and going for, it feels almost surprising, like you're suddenly aware of something which you knew was there but weren't really looking at until you're being told to look at it. And I love that feeling in films. I love the feeling of a film creeping up on you and just pulling the rug out from underneath you. And as an audience member, you really have to work through the pieces of this film when they're all handed to you. And I think that's where the devastating impact of this film really comes into play. And it's one of the reasons why I could not stop thinking about this film the entire day after it. Heck, even now, I'm still thinking about a lot of this film. And so again, I come back to the fact that this is a feature directing debut. This is her first feature length film and she pulled this off. Just gorgeous work from everyone involved. Easily the most I've reacted emotionally to a film this year. And just one which I, I, I'm almost afraid to, but I desperately want to revisit. And I hope if nothing else that Charlotte Wells is able to continue this emotionally intelligent and deeply empathetic view as a filmmaker in all of her films. I'm gonna be watching her like a hawk for the rest of her career. Where do you go from this? Like as a director, like how do you top this as your first film? But what about you guys? Have you caught After Sun at the London Film Festival? Have you seen it elsewhere in a year? What did you think about it? Did it destroy you? Let me know in the comments down below. We'll have a little chat. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see me talk about more shit, go ahead and click subscribe buttons down there, as well as my socials and my letterbox, which you can go follow if you wanna. I'll see you guys very soon for some more thoughts on more films. But until next time, I need a hug and I need a warm, like hot chocolate or something. What's cozy? Marshmallows. I want marshmallows. Mm -hmm.